from leaving out 22-time Grand Slam winner Rafael Nadal from the GOAT debate to saying that legends like Sampras and McEnroe wouldn't survive in the current tennis climate. Nick Kyrgios isn't ever too scared to deliver some truth bombs. But wait, what is the drama all about this time around? The Aussie tennis player Nick Kyrgios recently appeared on the Impulsive podcast. The podcast in question was hosted by none other than American YouTuber Logan Paul, which should tell you that something went down. I mean, put these two brazenly outspoken guys in a podcast together, and I'd bet they'd say something super controversial. Mike Milek and George Janko also joined Logan in hosting. The four guys talked about multiple things, ranging from their favorite Pokemon to conspiracy theories. I'll give it to them. It was a pretty entertaining podcast. But things got way more interesting when the topic of sports was brought up. Starting off with some basketball talk, the conversation quickly shifted to tennis. And what Nick had to say definitely shocked many fans all over the globe. And I'm sure you can guess the topic of such controversy. After all, nothing divides fans like a GOAT debate. And this fact is true for literally every sport out there. Fans usually choose a player they can relate to or a player they watched growing up. Emotion tends to trump all. Of course, there's always that segment that goes after cold hard facts, the stats. And I know you're curious, which did Nick base his opinion on? Well, when the hosts asked Nick who he thought the GOAT was, they had no idea his response would blow up the podcast. But Nick promptly chose Roger Federer. And it comes as no surprise. I mean, he's been pretty vocal about how much he admires Federer. In a past interview, Kyrgios also talked about his experience playing with the legend. He revealed how Roger makes the court feel so small. Take a stranglehold of the match, but he's just really composed. Um, you know, I felt like it's weird. I felt like he didn't do anything amazing today. Um, you know, he returned obviously the way he returns. I feel like he's just a great returner, but He's just so composed. And he can really make you feel like you're a horrible player when you're up against him. That's simply not true for players like Nadal and Djokovic. And according to Nick, one of the most annoying things about the Swiss player is that he's always the fan favorite, no matter where the match is happening. Uh, that I'm having with the ball on my hand is uh, honestly uh, great. Uh, I am feeling myself playing very well and uh, yeah. Fans are always rooting for him, and according to Nick, rightfully so. Nick even compared Federer to basketball legend Michael Jordan, which is high praise. But he also mentioned one other player who's statistically a little better. Can you guess who it is? I'll give you some hints. Hint number one, this person is a current player. Hint number two, he's relatively young. And the final hint, he's won 22 Grand Slams. Are you also thinking of Rafael Nadal? Well, if you are, you're wrong. It's Novak Djokovic. While Federer retired with 20 Grand Slams, Djokovic are he has 22 to his name, and the number just keeps increasing. However, of course, Rafa also has 22 grand ones, so I bet you'll be shocked to know that Nick didn't even mention him in the debate. Maybe he was looking at another statistic. The message really for any young tennis player around the world who is watching this now and dreaming to be here where Stefanes and I am, uh, dream big, dare to dream because after all, Djokovic has been number one in the world standings for the 378th consecutive week. That's higher than any other tennis player to ever exist. It's even more than Steffi Graf's 377 weeks. And trust me, when that record was set, nobody thought it was possible to break it. So I guess it makes sense that Kyrgios said Novak's records can't be overlooked. Still, I find it a little strange that he didn't even give Rafa an honorable mention, which got me thinking. Could there perhaps, by any chance, be some beef between them? Turns out there is. I knew my sixth sense was right. Let me break it down for you. The animosity between Kyrgios and Nadal probably started back in 2014. The then 19 year old Kyrgios made his name by beating Rafael Nadal on Wimbledon's open court. It was definitely a shocker to see a new tennis player with such zeal and skill. And I'm sure Rafael was pretty hard on himself for this loss. But again, it was just a match and Kyrgios did nothing wrong when he ultimately humiliated Rafa on the court. To, to build this relationship in a, in a, in a, in a very positive relation positive uh, way no so uh, yeah have been a, a very positive example I think for for everyone and for me personal without a doubt but things have been pretty tense between these two ever since they never got off on the right foot and it seems like Rafa's always had a bad impression of him a few years ago after another match against Kyrgios Rafael had some pretty critical comments to make according to the Spaniard Nick lacks respect for himself his opponent and even the crowd of course these harsh words could just be because Kyrgios defeated him yet again still it seems like Nadal gets really annoyed by the rapid speed Nick plays at that and the fact that he often uses the infamous 
infamous underhand serve. Yeah, I know, it's perfectly legal, but come on. That's what eight-year-old weaklings use when they're the underdogs. You'd expect something better from a pro. Anywho, it seems like leaving Rafa out of the GOAT debate was a major snub for Kyrgios. I, I went through a lot of warnings under my, my tennis career. Uh, never for uh, breaking a racket, never for, for doing uh, a mess on court, uh, but yes, for the, for the time clock. You know, I have a problem that I am sweating a lot. But at least he didn't say anything outright disrespectful about him, right? Unfortunately, the same can't be said of past tennis legends. Nick absolutely thrashed them. And I'm talking about players like Pete Sampras and John McEnroe. Even decades after retirement, these guys are household names. They should at least be considered as the potential goats, right? Well, according to Nick, absolutely not. When the hosts asked him about past tennis legends, they specifically brought up Sampras, who has 14 grand slams to his name. They also mentioned McEnroe and Agassi, who have seven and eight grand slams respectively. But the Aussie gave a pretty blunt response. No way. As in, there's no way any of these icons could keep up with the current tennis climate. I know, it sounds downright blasphemous to me as well, but Nick explained his decision through a basketball example, of course. He reasoned that a GOAT like Michael Jordan would still be able to play in the current era of the sport, and he would still have a high score. But according to Nick, players like McEnroe simply wouldn't survive against current players, and they'd get absolutely sniped. Ouch. This guy is definitely outspoken, that's for sure. And I know what you're wondering. What were some of the reactions to this news? Well, the obvious. It reignited the GOAT debate and, as I said, also showed fans that there was some definite beef between Rafa and Nick. But one other thing it proved was the fact that Kyrgios isn't afraid to tell it the way he sees it. He's not one to hold back his opinions, even if it means ruffling some big feathers in the tennis world. And according to tennis coach Dmitry Tursunov, that's why Kyrgios sells out his stadiums. In a podcast, the coach opened up about how the tennis world is trying to neuter the emotions out of the sport. This means that players are hesitant to speak their minds and show their personalities. After all, in this day and age, anything they say can be twisted and used against them. Even though Nick has been fined plenty of times for doing or saying the first thing that crosses his mind, you've got to give this guy the credit for being true to himself. That's a pretty rare thing nowadays. I mean, I, I do. I think there's better ways to... You know, I don't think I need to get fined to do that. But I try do you and... feel better about the fines now? That You know, all that great swearing? Yeah, I actually do feel better about it now. <laughs> you shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> and he doesn't keep his opinions restricted to the tennis world. He had something to add to the basketball GOAT debate too. After all, he's a huge basketball fan. He even said he'd be a pro player if he wasn't already playing tennis. Pickleball is massive in the States. It's huge and they've got a, uh, they're going to have a massive league there. And... Literally, my agents came to me like, look, do you want to be, you know, one of the main investors in, in the team? And I was like, yeah, like, who are some of the other names? Like, LeBron bought his own team. Wow. Kevin Durant bought the one in um, Brooklyn. In the podcast, Mylock brought up LeBron's achievement of becoming the highest scorer in the NBA. And of course, this sparked the GOAT debate. For basketball, Kyrgios had a clear winner, LeBron James. He's even got the guy tattooed on his arm. Anywho, those are the truth bombs Kyrgios delivered. 